Uh, various banks have released first quarter figures uh, in terms of property data on prices, sales, uh, and just general trends. And year on year, the increases range between anything from 8% to as much as 14%. What do you make of that? That is correct. Um, our own analysis showed that uh, our price increases during the first quarter of this year was around about 10%. So that was quite well uh, and a good performance compared to the same period last year. We, we actually saw that uh, prices were on a, on a declining trend during that period. Okay, so people have returned to show houses People are looking for mortgages. Some people have actually taken the bold step to buy across the various segments of the residential housing market, yet we're still being warned to be ca uh, cautiously optimistic about what's happening in property. Why? Yes. Um, after the downturn in the economy during 2008 and especially 2009, the property market also took quite a knock during that period. Um, but uh, we've seen in the meantime that the economy started to recover. Interest rates were cut by 550 basis points mm -hmm. since uh, late 2008. Um, and in, in terms of the latest statistics on the household sector, mm -hmm. um, household real disposable income increased uh, a little bit in the first quarter, mm -hmm. also consumption expenditure, consumer confidence increased. So there are a wide range of factors actually pointing to the economy picking up, mm. also um, improvement in the household sector, and that boosted the property market to some extent with market activity picking up and also transaction volumes moving to high levels. Uh, ratio of household uh, expenditure to debt is still somewhere in the region of 78%, which is quite significant. Yes. To that extent, people would be nervous about buying property and how's that going to impact on the sector yes. going forward? Obviously the household debt to income ratio is relatively high compared to what we've seen in, in previous years and that will have an impact on, on uh, consumer spending moving forward and also into the into the property market. Um, so uh, that, that is definitely a factor that one has to take into account although the conditions in terms of debt repayments uh, have improved um, mm -hmm. quite a lot based on the on the interest rate cuts that we've seen. Right. But that it was purely a cyclical movement. And uh, now moving forward with rates expected to remain relatively stable and maybe also going to increase at some mm -hmm. point in time, um, there will still be some pressure in right. terms of the debt ratio of households. All right. Now, in terms of demand, on a scale of 1 to 10, demand is sitting at 6.35, which is uh, pretty good. Uh, considering the, the recent uh, recession we've come from. But loan applications continue to be below 50% what they were in 2007. And it's obviously the recessionary conditions, it's obviously the debt condition. But what else is acting as an impediment? Well, uh, one has to take into account that the risks in terms of your uh, customer out there um, have increased quite a lot. Um, on the back of uh, a lot of employment uh, losses, job losses during the course of uh, most of, of 2009 and also in the, in the first quarter mm -hmm. of this year again. So these are factors that, that are having an impact and one has also taken into account against that background that banks credit criteria was also tightened quite a lot uh, over that period, right. although there have been some relaxation um, over the past uh, number of, of months. Okay, before we bring in Lumkile here, April was the first month of double digit price inflation. Now, that may be good for the sellers, but how's it going to impact on prospective buyers? Yes, obviously it will have an impact on, on buyers. Uh, according to our own calculations, the affordability of housing has already come under pressure again. And that is if you do the calculation in terms of house prices to household disposable income, or mortgage repayments to disposable income. Those trends have already turned around and it is based on the faster growth in, in house prices in recent times, stable interest rates, but also a very low uh, growth in, in household income during these periods. All right, Lumkile Mondi, now we know that um, at the uh, last MPC we got a 50 basis point cut, but the governor has stressed that we shouldn't expect more interest rate cuts, even though she now has this tacit growth mandate. Other factors are at play. What can the property, what can we expect from the interest rate cycle going forward and how will that impact on the property market where interest rates play a very big role in influencing people's decision to buy? Uh, firstly, Rato, on the interest rate cycle, uh, it's very bleak uh, because uh, with ASCOM coming through, we know that a lot of the municipalities are coming in July as well with high, uh, with high um, rates yeah, increases. Yeah. Uh, but also post World Cup, uh, we're going to see some toll roads kicking in. 
And so we see a huge impact on inflation, we're making, we're making, uh, ensuring that inflation uh, kicks up to above 6% mm -hmm. in the medium to long term. Uh, at the same time, uh, the, the consumer also is still very unsure about the sustainability of the recovery, mm -hmm. particularly for the export-led sector, because uh, with Europe uh, having these problems, uh, we think that the cost cutting that's going to be coming to, compa to, uh, to companies uh, may affect employment as well. So we may see some jobs being lost. However, property uh, for household still remains a very attractive investment, particularly uh, for, for smaller families, to making sure that, you know, as their wealth gets eroded elsewhere, that their house, although there's fluctuation in prices, but right. you know, in the long term, it will give them a better return than other assets uh, uh, in the financial sector. All right, Jacques, banks' lending advances are moderately higher, somewhere between 0.4% mm. to even 0.7% between January and March. They've become a lot more flexible in terms of their lending criteria, but we have a National Credit Act which demands banks to be more rigorous in their investigation of people's um, uh, suitability and creditworthiness. That is correct. Um, we still have to adhere to the stipulations of the National Credit Act and uh, we are bound uh, to responsible lending but also responsible borrowing from the consumer's side. So uh, that is still a very important right. factor that one has to take into account which will have an impact on, on credit extension moving forward. And just in terms of uh, property as an investment, the advice that you can give to people in terms of how they can manage their taxes because I think people are going to need to find ways in which they can save money. The capital gains tax is 10%. You pay a tax on rental income. Uh, if you're a foreigner, you pay a tax, plus exchange controls that impact on how much money you bring into the country. And if you're buying a property through a trust, you pay a different kind of a tax. What sort of advice could we give, gentlemen, to uh, prospective buyers? Well, I, I mean, one of the things that uh, I think, Mr. Shaw, what's Jack's view about it? One of the things that we've been trying to mobilize, but we failed, but largely this other consumer and financial institution is encouraging government to make some of the interest payments deductible as a tax benefit so that more people can have access to, uh, to, to property, uh, particularly the end, at the entry level. Mm -hmm. And that has income to it all. And in many countries, you know, interest payments are tax deductible. Mm -hmm. So it's one move that I think we can try and encourage uh, property ownership. But as an investment, as I said earlier, uh, for me, I'll still invest in property uh, because I, I still think that you know, when everything collapses, uh, when the banks collapse, yeah. you still have got a structure in front yeah. of you. Yeah. Uh, I fully agree with uh, Mankile there yeah. and in terms of uh, the interest portion of your repayment that can be made tax deductible. Right. Um, it has been the case in many other countries in the world. And in terms of property as an investment, I should say at this point in time one should look at uh, um, when you invest in property to have a longer term view, five years plus I should say, while in recent years the, the investment horizon was very much okay. shortened.